Today we're going to learn about floating light stands. Hey guys, Devin with Reef Dudes, and I've been getting a lot of questions on my floating light stands since I did my last video on the tank update two weeks ago. So today I'm going to go over it a little more in depth and hopefully answer all of your guys' questions. And as always, if there's any questions beyond this, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. So now let's get to it. So the floating light stand uh, is made out of extruded aluminum. It holds up my four Ecotec XR15 Pros. Um, this tank is against the wall. Um, as you guys might know, it's eventually going to turn to peninsula. So I really wanted to have nothing on this end of the tank. No power heads, no equipment, nothing. So I was determined to figure out how to build this floating light stand. And for my light stand, I ended up using what's called 1515, which is inch and a half by inch and a half extruded aluminum. And there's rails on all four sides. We'll go to the end to show you. So if you look down here, I don't have the covers on it. There is grooves in all four sides of it. So it allows, it's kind of like a channel so you can put little special bolts or screws inside. It allows you to slide stuff in and move stuff around. Now, the hardest part about building this was figuring out which thickness and how to make it so that it was perfectly level and it didn't have any sagging along it. So for four XR15s at about five and a half feet long, inch and a half worked with only a very slight amount of sag. And to compensate that, what I did is I kicked out the bottom just with a couple washers, just a smidge, just to keep it perfectly level. So that did a great job of holding it. Um, for attaching the lights to the rail, I used the XR or the Ecotec Radeon slide mounts. I believe they're called the RSM mounts or RSM slide mounts. And I'll put a link to those in the description so if I can find one. Um, so there's normally like a little U-shaped hook on the top. And what I did is I took pliers and I broke and just kind of pulled out the U-shape and just used it just for the bracket. On the bottom side of the bracket, I have a bolt going through the bottom and that goes into a little kind of nut that slides in between these rails. So there's one single nut in the bottom holding each one of these to the rail. And now, there you go. If I take off the end cap, you might be able to see, yeah, a little dark to see in there, but it's a square channel bar. Um, you can also see on the top and bottom of the round of the edges. There's kind of a cover and channel and that all that does is hide the channels and keep, makes it look pretty. Keeps the dust out, all that type of stuff. And on the back, that channel also works to hide my wires. So I ran a few strips of it along here and just cut out little notches as I went to hide the wires. Now if we go to the far side, pop that on later. Now if we go down to the far side, you can kind of see on the back where all the wires come out. So all the wires are in the channel. Um, three of them fit no problem. The fourth wire was pushing it, so I didn't bother putting the channel on here. And I just kind of push tuck them in. But from the front side, you can't see any wires on the tank. So it gives a very sleek look. And they kind of just run along the edge. And then on the side, they run down below. Now to attach this light arm, now they're, the biggest stress point is always gonna be your corner. So I did overkill this as always. Um, if you look from the top down, you can see I have a plate on each side of it. So I have this big aluminum plate on the side, as well as I also have a corner geist. So there is a corner bracket in the side. There's the two plates on the outside and just to up the ante a little more. I drilled a hole through the top and tapped it and have another bolt going down. So I got three different methods of fastening this corner just because I knew if anything was going to be a weak spot, it was going to be this corner. So I made sure I did tons of whatever I could think of to possibly strengthen the heck out of it. Now coming down, um, I did leave a little bit of a gap. I didn't want it resting against the overflow box just as a precaution. I didn't want anything stressing the glass in my tank. So I left you know, a little half inch gap on there. If you come down a bit further, you can see the first connection to the stand. And see if I can make this light a bit brighter. So I just use kind of L brackets on the back and they are bolted to the stand. Uh, this was a bit of a pain, but I drilled two holes for each side and I bolted it to the stand. So that's bolted at the top. And if we go down a bit further, it's also bolted at the very bottom. Two bolts bolting at the bottom and another two bolts up here. So there's four bolts going into the steel stand holding the light bar up. And on the bottom, I did use just, if you look in there, there is 
kind of hard to see, but there is just a nut. So there's two nuts in between there and the L bracket, and those are my spacers. And those little spacers are what helped level out the lights. So those cup, there's a tiny bit of slag, and those two nuts really help space it out. So if you guys are doing this um, and you want it to be floating like mine with only one connection, which I'm sure majority of the people watching this video, that's what they want to learn. Uh, the thing you got to calculate is the deflection with the beam. So I believe these are around a little over four pounds each. So there's four to 12, so 18, I'm going to say somewhere between 18 and 20 pounds on this. And they're called as a point load. So each point, so you can use a bunch of like engineering calculators to do it. I had to kind of ask the guy when I bought this stuff and he just kind of helped me work out for sure what I would need to hold about approximately 20 pounds of a distributed point load on this bar without it deflecting. So I think it's less than a quarter of inch deflection, but it's pretty much straight across and it creates a very sleek look on the tank. I would highly re recommend doing this if you have a peninsula style tank. It just gives your tank a very clean and open look. Uh, while we're at it, just to show you the overflow side. So I have an acrylic cover that wraps around here and hides all my plumbing and it gives it a nice clean look when it's all on there. So for my drains, let's so get in there a little more. So we have a strainer with a full siphon. We have the open siphon and the emergency. And the reason I went with that style is because it keeps it very quiet. And my tank's all about being quiet. It's a bit of a sneak peek into the back filtration department and light stand. I also have my two MP40s mounted in here. Now, I actually had to break a little bit of the glass because it wouldn't quite fit. And because I have acrylic and 15 mil glass, I was pushing it for the thickness of the MP40. So once in a while, the front side would actually fall off on me. So what I did is I put just a little bit of super glue on the back of this, or not super glue, uh, hot glue, just on the top and bottom of the driver. And that thing's made it rock solid. Haven't had an issue since. So. That's just a little bit to hold it to make sure there's no vibration and everything's been perfect. And they're still nice and quiet and they work very well in the tank. So hopefully that answered all of your guys' questions about the light stand. If, as always, if you have any more questions, let me in the comments below. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that bell to keep up to date for more future videos and tank updates. Now, if you guys missed the video from last week or two weeks ago about my tank update where I went over all the equipment and everything, I will link that at the end of the video and some other good stuff. All right, guys, cheers for now, and I'll catch you next video.